What up, spotters? Welcome to Super Start Select. I'm Jane, this is Johnny, and we're here to augment your fleshy human brains with science. To be precise, that's the science and science fiction of the cybernetic body upgrades in transhumanist stealth actioner Deus Ex Human Revolution. If you want to know how soon you can get fitted for your first nano ceramic robo limb, don't touch that dial with your pathetic, unaugmented fingers. We've also got a fetching driver San Francisco collector pack with which to begin building the next Start Select Pile of Prizes. But wait, there's more. To celebrate the beginning of the annual autumn glut of big name releases, we're going to kick off with what's in the shops right now. Friday the 9th of September brought with it the launch of a clutch of notable titles, AAA and otherwise. Take note, video game shoppers, among them you will find... Dead Island, that zombie game with the backwards trailer, set around a tropical resort overrun with walking corpses. Though it is a bit ropey in places, there's plenty of fun to be had, especially in four-player co-op, and there is a day one patch available to address a number of glitches. Let's hope it cadaver positive effect on this Desert Island disc. Also just out, Warhammer 40k Space Marine. If you want to stomp around in the giant space boots of the more or less archetypal Space Marines, here's the game for you. It will be a chainsawed massacre with single co-op and multiplayer third person shooting and slicing. Shooty PS3 exclusive Resistance 3 hit shops at the same time. Chimera second and we'll tell you all about it. It's set in 1957, four years after Resistance 2, when all the surviving humans have gone to ground, hiding from the parasitic Chimeran menace. We gave it an 8.5, which makes it a great game, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And if you've been craving something new for your 3DS, how about Star Fox 64 3D? A remake of the 1997 N64 title, Star Fox 64, jazzed up with stereoscopic visuals and the option to steer your R-Wing Starfighter by tilting the 3DS, like you always wanted. Something something, do a barrel roll. Every day, modern science brings us closer to its ultimate goal, letting humans fire ball bearings in all directions from their upper bodies like shrapnel lawn sprinklers. But just how close is that glorious inevitable day? GameSpot UK's Dr Professor Cameron Robinson, PhD, puts on his science hat to assess our chances of getting powerful cyber prostheses as seen in Deus Ex Human Revolution in the near future. Deus Ex Human Revolution is flying high in the charts, with masses of gamers flexing their robo limbs as gruff cyberhero Adam Jensen. His various biomechanical upgrades, known as augmentations, are a central pillar to the action, around which the game makers have built a sophisticated and elegant fiction. As the game starts, Jensen is given a full suite of military-grade augments to save his life, and you activate these as you go along. But just how close are Jensen's sci-fi augmentations to current or future reality? For starters, Jensen's augmented limbs let him punch through walls, elbow stab baddies, pull vending machines around and even jump slightly higher than the average near future Joe. But the question, obviously, is how close is modern science to giving us superhuman strengths and nano-ceramic elbow blades? They'd be so useful. On. So, how close is the science fiction to science fact? Modern prosthetic technology has come a long, long way from the rudimentary wooden limbs once whittled by cavemen. The most advanced models to date connect directly to the owner's nervous system, letting him or her control the arm just as they would a natural limb. Complex gripping tasks like picking up smooth objects and even excelling at Swedish board games are now possible with these impressive appendages. While these developments are amazing and clearly life-altering, if it's wall-smashing strength you're after, you really have to go to the world of powered exoskeletons. Now these range from the badass to the not-so-badass, but they're admittedly not true augmentations. You don't get them bolted onto your torso, they're more something you climb inside to say, do battle with a monstrous alien queen? <laughs> When it comes to legs, however, researchers are really upping the augmented ante. Carbon fibre blades, or cheetahs, have proved so successful that athletes like Oscar Pistorius, a double amputee with just such legs, were banned for a time from competing alongside able-bodied runners, as the flex of the carbon fibre was judged to be better than the human ankle. Now that's what we're talking about. 
The ban has since been overruled and just last week Oscar became the first Paralympian to compete in the World Championships, helping South Africa to a silver in the 4x400m relay. Nice work. Secondly, if like me you enjoy stealthing it up in Deus Ex, then the glass shield cloaking system is likely your best friend. When activated, this augmentation bends the light around the augmentee instead of letting it hit him and be reflected. No reflected light equals invisibility. This hides our friend Adam from guards and cameras while also letting him slip through laser security systems unnoticed. In reality, researchers have developed something kind of similar called metamaterials which can direct the flow of electromagnetic radiation, of which light is just one type, smoothly around an object, like water flowing around a rock in a stream. Sounds promising? Unfortunately, so far this has only proved possible with microwaves, not waves from the visible spectrum of light. So not much use right now, but rest assured, we'll be scouring the pages of the Journal of Applied Optics, watching for the day someone cracks visible light cloaking. Lastly, drunken roof terrace parties are no longer a risk to the trench-coated one, thanks to the Icarus landing system. Using something called an EMF decelerator, this augment generates a fixed focus electromagnetic lensing field, whatever that is, when it detects Jensen has launched himself off a building, essentially pushing against the Earth's own magnetosphere, decelerating his drop and resulting in a satisfyingly dramatic landing. So you might suspect something with this many sciencey words must be possible, we did. There is a question of whether the Earth's magnetic field is even strong enough, in theory, to suspend Jensen's weight. So we did a calculation. Well, if we calculate his weight and assume a spherical Jensen in a vacuum, uh, Uh, we'll have to get back to you with the numbers, but bear in mind that the Earth's magnetic field is pretty weak on the planet's surface. That's why compass needles have to be light. However, magnetic levitation, or maglev, is a real thing. It's used to levitate trains a few inches above the track, called a guideway, using magnets to create both lift and thrust. However, I don't remember seeing any guideways in Deus Ex Human Revolution, and last time I checked, Jensen is not a train. Of course, we're not here to do Deus Ex down with our science nerdery. Human Revolution is smart, thoughtful science fiction of the highest order, with many a clever nod to science fact and plenty of grounding in current cutting-edge technology. Like the best sci-fi, it extrapolates creatively from what we already know, and for that, we give it full credit. Next time on Does It Work? Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Magic? Dragons? Bows and arrows? As mentioned at the top of the show, we've got this, a driver San Francisco collector pack for the Xbox 360 to give away. We're going to use it to begin assembling our next care package of game goodies, so look out for more prizes next week. To get your name in the competition hat early, just decipher this video game anagram, OK? Easy. Answers on an e-postcard to competitions at gamespot.co.uk. Oh, feedback. Some days you're really all that keeps us going. If you'd like to help sustain us, hit us up on the GSUK Facebook page, on Twitter or on the Start Select homepage. On the topic of Tuesday's Start Select, in which Johnny ran down the 37 fixes in the Dead Island Day 1 patch and produced a similarly impressive number of heinous zombie puns, Captain Rex Kramer said... I like the don't bite my head off line. Now, I realise that games nowadays can be pretty complex and therefore one might run into a snafu or two, but 37, a Day 1 patch for 37 bugs, that's kind of sad. One wishes companies would just take a bit more time and release a complete and problem-free game. On the same game, Dread D Lord D commented, Something about Dead Island zombies feels captivating. The corpses seem realistically interactive when they receive blows and gunshots. Though Muckus curb stomps his enthusiasm for Dead Island like so. I love zombie games and I was really thinking about getting this one. I'll wait. Nice review, J-Man. J-Man of course being Johnny's superhero identity. Secret superhero identity. So yeah, thanks Muckus. <laughs> And that's all she wrote, folks. Catch you next time round. Have a great weekend.
scroll, 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 scroll. No scroll, more scroll, jokes scroll. about shutting down start select. Uh -huh. Let's hope it cadaver positive respect. Respect oh, balls! This delivery was so good. Grabby boxy. Grabby boxy. Throwy. Grabby boxy. Singy. Catchy monkey. All right. Shooty PS3 exclusive. Bleh. And produced a similarly impressive number of highness. Highness? I wrote that. Okay. Which one of us would be Terry Wogan? Oh, feedback. Some days it's really... Bleh. Sorry, that's me, not the script. <laughs> All right, thanks, Seb. Ooh, that's cool. No thanks, camera card. <laughs> no, you're all right, camera card. 